Come on, baby. Take your mummy to the old video. Oh, look, I picked you up. Hello, and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all doing very, very well. It's Bank Holiday Monday when I'm filming this, and I'm in my Bank Holiday uniform, so comfy, do uh, comfy dungarees, socks, nice comfy jumper. Not a drip of makeup on me, my hair like this, and yeah, it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a day of reading and relaxing and recuperating. Um, but today's video is about um, the books that I read in the month of May. I read 13 books in the month of May, which is pretty impressive, and DNF'd one. Uh, we'll do the stats first, then we'll talk about the book I DNF'd, and then we'll move on to the actual books. So, as I said, I read 13 books in May. Um, seven of those were books that I owned, which was 54% of my reading. Four were audiobooks, which was 31% of my reading. Two were from the library, which was 15% of my reading. I didn't borrow any from any friends or fam. Um, and then in the grand scheme of things, that means I've read 53 books so far this year. 24 of those have been books that I own, which is 45% of my reading, which is good. It means I'm getting through the old shelves. Uh, 15 have been on audio, audio, which is 28% of my reading. 13 from the library, 25% of my reading. And I borrowed one book from my sister. Um, that's 1% of my reading. So yeah, let's let's crack on with, with what I've been reading. We'll start with the DNF. So I DNF'd this book, which was A Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles by Ned Palmer. A uh, non-fiction book that actually got onto my TBR this month because it won the first line battle. Um, so I film a video every month where I battle um, each section of books um, in their colour with their first line against the next colour section of books. And then whichever one's got the best first line I add to my TBR for the next month. And this had quite a promising first line, but I realised very quickly, I would say probably about 15 pages in, that I'm just not that interested in cheese history as I thought I was. <laughs> so I DNF'd it. Rather than slog my way through it, it got DNF'd. It will go to another home. But let's talk about the books that I actually read this month. So first of all, we started. So I read a few graphic novels this month, actually. I started off the month with a graphic novel, which was Spell on Wheels by Kate Leth, Megan Levens and Marissa Louise. So it was very good fun. I read this all in sort of like one sitting. I was in the bath and then I was in bed. Um, about these three um, women who's um, who, gets up, who get fucked over, basically, by some scummy old man. And um, this is them trying to get their belongings back and trying to get a sort of like minimal revenge on him. Loved it, thought it was really fun, like a good episode of telly, I remember thinking. Loved the outfits, loved, for example, this scalloped cardigan, very into that. And yeah, found it great fun. Bought the second one instantly, haven't read that yet, but we'll probably read that next month. So would highly recommend Spell on, Spell on Wheels. Good bloody fun. Next up, I read At the Bottom of the River by Jamaica Kincaid. Um, this was the first Jamaica Kincaid book I'd read. This was a very small little slip of a thing. Don't even think it's 100 pages. It's not even nearly 100 pages. It's 70 pages. And this was a collection of Jamaica's work, mainly focusing on sort of like the mother-daughter relationship, um, but also there's stuff in there about um, nature and the environment in Antigua. And yeah, I felt sort of a bit at all about this because one minute I'd be reading it and it would feel like really sort of like calm soothing writing and then the next it was so urgent and like repetitive where it was trying to sort of like hammer a message home that it actually felt quite panicked um so yeah I didn't ever really sort of settle into this um but I am willing to give Jamaica I am willing <laughs> but I will give I've got a, a collection of um of her books so I'll, I'll be going back to some more at another point but yeah didn't love this I think mainly I just felt unsettled the whole time I was reading it so that's that. Next up was uh, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, which I listened to on audiobook. Um, I also had the copy from the library, uh, the big hardback copy, and was reading this because it had been long listed, subsequently short listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I think this book is going to win the Women's Prize for Fiction, but I will say now, I didn't really enjoy it. I felt a bit sort of... Um, TLDR, that's what the kids say, don't they? Too long, didn't read. And there was so much sort of, um, yeah, it just it just felt really long and a bit boring to me. There was a few books I read this month that I found a bit boring. Um, this was based on David Copperfield, uh, the book by Charles Dickens. And I don't know if maybe if I'd have read that, I would have felt a few more of the links. But yeah, when I first started reading it, it felt a bit sort of goldfinchy to me. And I thought we were going to cover like, the span of one person's life in great detail but we didn't we covered um like one person's like their, their sort of like childhood up until young adulthood 
Um, and yeah, it was, there was just so much sad stuff that happened all the time. It was literally like this thing happened, then this thing happened, then this sad thing happened, then this sad thing happened. And yeah, I just couldn't connect with it at all. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it at all. I didn't enjoy it at all, but I do, I do think it's gonna win, you know, guys. I've just got a, a vibe about it. Next up was Idol Burning, which I really enjoyed. Um, I read this off the back of having read um, I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel last month. I'm really loving that. And this is, um, yeah, so this is translated by Asa Yoneda. And this is a book about fandom. And in particular, we're following um, a young girl, um, Akari, and her Oshi or her idol, um, who is a young man in a, in a boy band. Um, this boy band um, have different colours attributed to them and the colour that he's got is blue. So like she dresses wearing blue all the time and everything she buys is blue and all of this sort of thing. And she's very, very into him. She's got a blog where she writes about him and people sort of rely on her to get her take of what is going on in that band um, and particularly with that member of the band. And then, um, early on in this uh, in the book um the, the her idol her oshi um hits one of his fans and um she sort of like is desperately desperately searching for answers and why he would have done that and why and why that's so out of ordinary and like she really feels like she knows him um and people are maybe looking to her for answers of why he would have done it because she studies him so so such a lot um but yeah I really, really, really enjoyed this. I thought this was really well done. It's also, it felt sort of quite specially and, and like a lot of work had gone into it. There's a lot of um, illustrations at the beginning of each chapter. It's not a particularly long book, um, but yeah, there's sort of like illustrations throughout. Um, and some of it's written in like blog um, or like chat, um, chat speak because she's talking a lot about um, him. And yeah, it just felt it just felt really like it had been pulled together very well. And there's also at the end of this book, there's a, uh, a Q and A with Rinya Sami. There's also um, a, a note from the translator and a note from the illustrator. And yeah, it was just it felt like a real celebration of everyone that had a hand in this book, which I don't often find when I read translated books or books that have illustrations in and stuff. It felt really great. And yeah, the actual like following it, the set, like as I said. Turns out that I'm really into books about fandom. So I've also want to read um, Y slash N, um, which is another one that uh, apparently is a little bit like this and I'm a fan. So if, if anyone knows any more books about fandom, I'd definitely be interested in reading them because yeah, I enjoyed this and I, well, I loved this and I loved, um, I'm, I'm a fan as well. Enjoyed, very much so. Uh, then next up was, oh, so from a, 4.5er to a one star um it was a book that i read for my um book club in real life with my friends that we do on facebook um it was the phone box at the end of the world by laura Ime massini so there's two books that that i like that, that, that i had feelings about that are similar and gave one star to both of those books and the, the feeling that is, is difficult to, to explain, as you will see, I'm having difficulty explaining, is that the two books had really tragic sort of subject matter. And in this instance, it's the subject matter of a mother losing her child um, and that the mother losing her child in a, in a tsunami um, and also having lost her mother. So having no one to sort of like that, that mother daughter relationship just being sort of like severed. Um, and I'll get on to the other one, which is the last book I read of the month, which has similar tragic feelings, uh, themes. But both of these books I found extremely boring, which is an awful thing to say. But I really, truly did find them so boring. This book, I listened to the audiobook of this one. And at times it felt like I was listening to like a sleep podcast or something. You know, like sometimes you put on, I mean, I've listened to them before. I've got, there's a whole host of them on Audible by Jamie Dornan. Um, and he reads, um, he sort of like sets the scene or reads a, a story that doesn't really have much of a point to it and just reads it in a really relaxing voice to try and send you off to sleep. And that's how it felt when I was reading it. Like it just felt like it was never going to get to a point and it was being read in a really sort of like relaxing and monotonous way. And yeah, I just didn't enjoy this. And <laughs> I felt awful because the bloody, um, the chats we've been having in book club, uh, my book club, not my Patreon book club, my book club um, that I do with my friends. I haven't enjoyed a book, I would say this year, <laughs> which is also awful. Uh, but this one I made sure I finished. Um, but yeah, I did not enjoy this. I found it ever set ever so boring um next up was an audiobook that i did not find boring though and that was in the blink of an eye by joe callahan 
Uh, this is this came to me um, by means of Sarah Cox's um, between the covers, between the covers, between the sheets, between the covers um, TV show. And yeah, this got recommended to me and I picked it up on Libby on Audible and I enjoyed it. I've actually told David to put a reservation on because I think he'll enjoy it. A very sort of like fast paced uh, crime thriller book um, about AI being introduced into the police force to look into cold cases and in this particular cold cases of missing people um, and they're looking into the case of um, two uh, young lads that went missing and the AI is sort of like looking at data and CCTV and stuff that the AI can do in like seconds which would take a team of I don't know how many, four, let's say, like a week to do. So like trying to look at like where they can cut costs and where that's gonna, end. and also this AI can present as a hologram, so can present as a member of the team as well. And I found it a very interesting premise because I guess um, AI is something that we're all incorporating into our lives um, more and more. And I imagine that AI can do some jobs a lot quicker and this sort of like data analysis job can do that very much quicker. Um, they had to, <laughs> the writing itself um, had to be, the, the scene had to be set very quickly, I think, before, cause, because they wanted to get onto like the AI stuff. So the, um, the actual uh, chief, the, the, the detective that's looking into this case, who's been paired with Locke, this AI, um, early, on, early on she's saying lines such as like, just because I'm a middle-aged woman and I haven't been at work for six months because I've been off with family problems, you think that I'll come in here and take this case even though you know I've got personal feelings against it. <laughs> so like, literally summing up like, this woman's working life in like three lines, which I found quite lull, but also I understand it was necessary, but it was just, I was like, this is daft. But yeah, as the storyline went on, I was sort of mildly gripped by the whole thing and thought it was interesting so yeah found it interesting um next up is the archers um home fires at ambridge by Catherine miller this is the second archers book that i've read um i read this this month and then i read uh, the first one last month i've been buddy reading these with um david's dad um and then we we read they're set up in um in the chat each chapter is a month so it's quite easy to sort of like buddy read this because we'll be like we'll read january today um but this one i didn't enjoy as much as the other one so this one uh, what I do enjoy about these books is that I'm a big fan of The Archers. I have been for, I think it's about seven or eight years I've been listening to it now. Just keeping an eye on Minnie because she'll go over to my peonies and eat them. She's making her way over to the peonies. Is she going to eat them? Or is she just going to sit nicely on the windowsill? Just sit nicely, Minnie. I think she is just sitting nicely. Right, good girl. Well done. Um... Yeah, so The Archers is a, a radio soap that's been running for like 75 years. I've been into it for the last sort of seven years, very much enjoyed it. David, David's dad's listened to it since he was a young lad. So um, when we picked a couple of books to buddy read, these were the perfect ones. And these are sort of prequels to the actual, before the, the, um, the Archers started. So these are set in like early 40s. And there's characters in this that are now really, really, really old in The Archers. So, um, and the first one I enjoyed a lot more than this one. Um, that one had a sort of thread of like anonymous notes being left around the village um, and with like sort of like gossipy bits in them and the thread that sort of held this together was uh, one of the uh, one of the older women in the, the village dying and her um, through the means of her will being read out quarterly throughout the year where her house was going to go to who her house was going to go to and there was like different sort of and that all sort of went a little bit over my head if I'm being honest there was like flowers and the initials of the flowers were maybe spelling out who the cottage was going to go to and blah 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 blah. but the actual sort of like day-to-day -day life of um the villagers i was interested in and i remember writing in my reviews it's this sort of like fluff but sort of like the more serious fluff because it has a sort of like little nod to things that are going on at the time so like homophobia there's a storyline about a gay character in here who gets attacked and and things like that and um immigration and what's going on with the war and stuff like that so yeah i think there's a if you're a fan of the archers you'd get a lot more i, I don't know if just picking this up you think oh yeah that's really good because i was drawn to it for the archers and i stayed for the archers content but yeah but that's them both done now so if david's dad and i to re uh, read buddy read any more books together it won't be archers ones which i'm sort of a bit pleased about because to be honest this has got a lot more shagging in it than i <laughs> 
and I would have opted for when picking a book to buddy read with my father-in-law. Um, next up is a short story collection called Send Nudes by Saba Sam. So it's a whole video of me reading this book um, using some short stories tips from you guys that I asked for on um, Instagram. So I will link that down below. But as a whole, I enjoyed this short story collection. Um, if you watch that video, or if you have watched that video, you'll notice I say that I've never, re I've always struggled to connect with short stories, and that's because they're a collection. Normally, there's some I really love, some I'm indifferent about, and some that I do not like at all, particularly in anthologies. This collection, it's. Um, itself was by one author so like if I got on with the writing style you'd be hopefully thinking she's probably going to enjoy a lot more of this but yeah I took on a lot of um tips from you guys and I think with those tips I got a lot more out of this co uh, collection one of the main tips I took away was that every time I finished a story I made a little note um three three words about each of the stories and then at the end I sort of like linked together what else was going on so like the main themes in these stories were sort of names um friendship betrayal um like cho chosen family and also feels like animals appeared quite often in the stories blood appeared quite often in the stories and it was fun to sort of like work out these things that were reappearing and yeah i got a lot from it and i think it's a good story a short story collection so would recommend and as i said i will link that video down below if you'd like to go and find out a little bit more about it next up was an absolute banger i read three books this month which all well could appear on my best books of the year I need to start I've had such a good reading year so far like ordinarily when I get to sort of like halfway through the year I mean June will be halfway through the year I start looking at um, books that might appear in my best books of the year and sometimes I'm thinking oh I have to put like a, a three star book in there that I've enjoyed because I always like it to be ten but this month this year I've had some battling for those places because I've read such bloody good books the first of which from uh, well the, the, not the first of which because as i said i really enjoyed idol burning but the second book i've read this month that i really really loved and will probably be appearing on the best books of the year was the memory of animals by claire fuller this was absolutely fantastic and i didn't want it to end and similarly i spent quite a long time in this because i started reading it before i went away on my choir holiday so then read a little bit over that and then was quite busy at work so i didn't get so i really spent a lot of time with this this book and, and nephi the main character and, and the other characters in the book it's a pandemic book and claire fuller herself actually wrote this book before the pandemic so reading this like her having written this and then the pandemic happening must have been like oh because reading it now after the pandemic is sort of like seemingly the world is returning to normal um was really a moment but so we're following a pandemic whereby people um forget things and uh, they have uh, like brain function problems and um slow down and sort of like could be driving and then forget how to drive and then just crash their car and that sort of thing and during this pandemic um nephi our main character um volunteers for a clinical vaccine trial to have a vaccine against the um the, the the virus um that hasn't been tested on anyone else before so at the beginning of the story she's going in for this clinical um trial her uh, family are sort of trying to convince her not to do that but she goes along with it anyway and then we hear about her having the vaccine and then being injected with the virus and that sort of thing so we're, we're hearing that side of things there's three narratives in there all from nephew's point of view which i really really loved so the current one of her having had the the vaccine and all of that stuff that's unfolding and like shit gets pretty crazy um and then her remembering her um, memories from her childhood uh, with her father who lived um in greece and um uh, memories of her mother and all sorts of like meeting her significant other and those sort of things and then these letters that are being written and as the book goes on you find out who these letters are being written to um but yeah, the three the three threads were just amazing. And as they all sort of come together at the end, you were just like, it was like music, like amazing. And yeah, the urgency of like what was happening now and the panic around that, relaying back to sort of like lovely memories of her in in Greece with her fa with her father. And it all just sort of like melded together so beautifully. By the time she wakes up for having had the vaccine and the in, um, and the, the virus injected into her, like shit has really gone to shit. And she's in central London and she's looking out the window of this facility that she's in. And like you can see in the streets, like things are not as they should be and they haven't seen anyone for days and stuff like that. So yeah, I was really, really gripped by the whole thing. And when I finished it, I was a bit like, oh, bloody hell. Like, what are you doing, Minnie? You're running around playing. Um, I wanted more but at the same time I really respected the sort of like cutting it off where it was 
because it really left you thinking, what else could happen here? But yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I, I mean, I've read um, a couple of books by Claire Fuller. Unsettled Ground made it to my favourite books of the year a couple of years ago. And also, um, Our Endless Number of Days is another one of hers that I've really enjoyed. So yeah, I need to get around to reading, I think there's one called Blood Orange or something. But yeah, so far, everything I've read by her I've really enjoyed, but this was... Uh, next up, another one I really enjoyed was Alison by Lizzie Stewart. This is a graphic novel, um, and it's a graphic novel about a young girl, Alison, who marries quite young um, and lives in Dorset, and she's a, of a, from a working class background. Um, and um, she has an affair and uh, ends up moving to London um, and becomes quite um, part of the sort of like 70s art scene. The illustrations themselves I absolutely loved. Um, but I also really like this setup of sort of like passages of text, which I tend to get on a bit better with, um, rather than sort of chatting amongst um, them. I'm trying to find an example. All oh, right, so this, so uh, although this is still enjoyable, like the comic strip type setup, but I prefer this sort of like passages and then the artwork that relays to it. And yeah, I just thought it was a really great sort of like. Um, commentary on I mean I don't know hardly anything about art but like your art and what you're putting out there so like this I guess is my art <laughs> you're welcome um but also fitting in and uh friendships and making friendships when you're um maybe a bit older or not used to making friends and um moving to a big city when you've lived in a really small place the whole time there was just lots and lots in there it was really like lots of like sort of treasure in there so just when you think you're reading a book about someone who's had an affair and's moved to london there's stuff in there about friendship and about fitting in and about wanting to fit in and maybe changing yourself in order to fit in and then in the end realizing that you haven't changed at all and that sort of thing yeah um but i really liked um the sort of way that it almost had like a bit of a scrapbook feel to it as well like here if you look at that page um and then we'd alternate from like scrapbook feelings to then passages about the art that she was making at the time and then on to sort of comic book strip things and then occasionally you'd get a colour a colour picture in there which would sort of startle you a bit like th this one for instance and like I'd be like oh god it would really take me out of it and just sort of like get myself into it but yeah I really loved it and I, I had the feeling like once I finished it I was like bloody hell I actually want to start this all from the beginning again but um, and I will revisit this. I really had a lovely time with it, really enjoyed it. Um, then next up was The Favour by Nikki French. I listened to this on audio. Um, <laughs> this was fine, I think, when, when it comes to Nikki French books. Um, I really enjoyed the Frida Klein series, but the other ones I've read, the sort of more standalone ones, um, I've sort of like enjoyed them while I'm in them, but afterwards they become a bit forgettable to me. This one I think is a bit more memorable because the premise I felt was so daft in that we're following a, a, a doctor, a young woman who's a doctor. She's about to get married and all sorts. And um, somebody from her past turns up at the hospital that she works at. So her, her ex-boyfriend from school turns up at the hospital she works at. And he's like, oh, you wouldn't do me a favour. I mean, she hasn't spoken to him for literal years, like 15 years. You wouldn't do me a favour, would you? Um, if you drive my car up to Norwich, at uh, Norfolk, I'll meet you at this Airbnb that I've paid for and um, I'll ask you the favour then. And she's like, well, yeah, all right, I'll do that. I would just be like, no, you're fine. Um, but she's like, yeah, oh, and also he says, oh, would you fill, fill the car up with petrol on the way? Here's my card. I mean, this is supposed to be a clever woman. She's a doctor. And she just like goes along with it and is like, yeah, sure. And then all sort of like things start unfolding from when she arrives at this Airbnb. And I thought that, that that whole premise I found difficult to, to believe anyway. And then from that point onwards, she sort of really drops her old life, uh, her life as a doctor and her, her fiance who she's about to marry to investigate something that's going on with somebody that she used to go out with 15 years ago and hasn't thought about or even talked to for that long. So yeah, the premise was daft, but quite often I think you have to suspend your, your disbelief for a while, but don't you, when you're reading these. Um, and something quite significant, I guessed, early doors as well. Um, nicely, my colleague was reading this book at the same time, so we were both um, reading about it and chatting. She was a little bit ahead of me, um, but we were reading about it and chatting at the same time, so that was fun. An unofficial uh, buddy read, I believe they call that. So yeah, next book. Another one I really bloody loved this month, really, really loved it, and that's Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. Um, 
God, this was such a good page turner, thriller, amazing thing. So we're following two people, um, Laura and Roach, who both work in a chain bookstore called Spines. Like stones. I'll say Alice, um, the author, worked in Waterstones for many, many years, which is a chain bookshop store in the UK. Um, and Laura and Roach are seemingly quite different people. Um, and... Um, Roach is very into um, true crime and um, Laura's mother was murdered by a serial killer when um, she was a teenager. So they've got very different views on the whole thing of true crime. And the, the actual, the, the commentary in here on the true crime sort of phenomenon, like true crime podcasts and stuff. Hello. Um, the phenomenon on true crime podcasts and how sort of like glamorised murders been and all of this sort of thing. I found I, I've never listened to like um, these. Sort of, I can't. There's one where they're called like murderinos and things like that, isn't it? I've, I've never listened. I've, I've listened to a few true crime podcasts, like um, um, oh my god, what was that one called? An American Life is that the one? Is that what it was called? But I've never listened to like these ones that are, feel like are a bit more glamorising of of murder but the, the commentary on that was amazing but also this sort of like obsession um between laura and roach or roach sort of like feeling for laura and i loved that and the tension it's building and there's a lot of like foreshadowing of stuff that's yet to come or is it to come and that sort of thing but that integrated with the sort of like book selling aspect i loved that i loved the book selling aspect um and the sort of like inner workings of a bookshop and the stock takes and people working night shifts on the run up to Christmas to get everything looking great and like I really really enjoyed all of that and then interspersed with like tension and the social aspect of everyone sort of like going out for drinks after work and stuff like that I thought it was absolutely brilliant it was a real real treat a real real page turner I had a joyful joyful time but I tell you what it's very sort of like grubby and grotty and like gross there's a lot of like stuff in here about like tooth decay and bad breath and snails and slugs and stuff this particular book though like it's so speaking of snails it's so nicely pulled together there's this little snail called bleep <laughs> who's making his way across the page so as the book goes further on bleep gets further and further along through the book and i just thought that was such a lovely touch like a really really nice little thing inside a book that i just found so cute so yeah really really highly recommend this had a great time with it like I said, some real bloody absolute bangers this month. But to end on a non-banger, and the last book, I've, I've alluded to this earlier this uh, earlier in this wrap-up. God, this wrap-up's probably really long as well. This was Fun Home, a family tragic comic by Alison Bechdel, which was the book that we read for my Patreon book club. Also, my Patreon book club, we've read five books this, this year so far. We read one a month. Three of them, I think, are going to be on my best books of the year. And then two of them, I've given one star. <laughs> so it's really sort of like highs and lows this was a um a graphic novel the theme was graphic novels and this is a graphic novel about alison it's a memoir of her growing up working um in the family home uh, growing up in the family home which is a funeral home and her relationship with her father her father's um death by suicide and um sort of like then finding out that her dad had um had uh, relations with young boys um but yeah, I just found it, I really, really couldn't connect with it at all. I felt I really, really had to drag myself to read it, which I just think is not a good thing. And had this not been for Patreon Book Club, I would have DNF'd it for sure. Um, I found the art style really, really hard to connect to, uh, to, to read. And in particular, like letters and stuff. There's, there's, whereas in the Allison book where there was like, bits of text and stuff that you'd read quite often there'd be bits of text but i wouldn't really see the point of them or that we'd have like a letter which i found i'm trying to find there'd be letters which the writing was so faint you couldn't really read it or they'd be like oh here we go so for example here's a passage in a book and then it has a text box over it so you i find it every i found everything really really difficult to read there's also so many sort of literary and philosophical um, references in here that all went over my head and left me feeling a bit sort of like Ugh like left out and a bit sulky um but yeah in general i found it sad hard to connect to it, it didn't feel welcoming in terms of like a book it didn't feel easy to connect to um but i will say a few people gave this five stars so like whereas i didn't enjoy this at all a few people did really enjoy it but yeah disappointingly ended on a one star but as i said like one two three four four point five 
books this month amazing really really amazing so yeah they're the books that i read in the month of may let me know if you've read any of these books let me know what books you read in may and i'll see you all again soon thursday for my june tbr see you then june's gonna be the month of tbr so i'll see you then bye